Welcome back. Now we've got uh, Chief Dan Ulasi here with us to uh, give us his perspective on things. Thank you for coming on this morning. My pleasure. Well, let me ask. I mean, last time out, we knew you as uh, a member, a former chairman of PDP in Anambra State. Right. So last week, are you still a member? I resigned uh, about a week ago. From the PDP? From the PDP. And I have no intention of joining any other party. But I'll support whatever candidate or whoever I think will have a developmental effect on my state. So what party are you in? Uh, I'm not. That's what I just said. I'm in no party. No party. But I'm just supporting the governor of Anambra State because of his uh, antecedents and what he's doing for You're people. supporting the current oh, governor? Oh, yes. I'm supporting the current governor. But you heard that uh, the PDP just left here. He says, well, contrary to what a lot of people believe that is going on, is just uh, in the media and there's really nothing on ground, no continuity to show for it. Well, you know, J.J. Martin is a very close friend of mine. Very close, and when I say very close... You all seem to be friends yes. in politics. I mean, uh, because they, most of them have followed me politically for a very long time. And I find it difficult to be personal because I've never... Uh, there's no reason why I should be personal. Yesterday I had a program on AIT. And it was surprising to me that by 12 midnight I received more than 500 calls. If I give you my phone, the number of texts that came in from very distinguished citizens of Anambra State thanking me for at least shaping their view of what they are going to do. And amongst those callers was Peter B. He called me about five times yesterday. And on the fifth one, I answered him. He said, oh, girl, I thought we were in good terms. We have settled that. I have no problem with you. But Peter, I want to take you back to 12 years ago. And he kept quiet on the telephone. I said, 12 years ago, you won a mandate in Anambra State. And it was stolen from you. And then I was chairman of PDP. We had a disagreement in government with Ngige, who was then governor. And I said, no. I had a press conference to say that you won the election. When I did that, Peter, had I met you all my life? He said, no, sir. Only yesterday. I said, people think in this country, before you do anything, there must be something going behind the, the wheels. He said, I never met you. Lady Jacob Mokolo had to take you to come to my house. And I said, is this the Peter B? I never met you. I don't want to say all that has happened. But four years ago, most importantly, you brought out a young man. I don't want to say how that young man, who is now governor of Anambra, came out. It wasn't Peter who brought him out. It was Victor, man. Who brought him out? But, Not Peter. But he, the, the governor supported him. Oh, yeah. He, he had no alternative because he wanted an Obaze. I don't know what his business is with the Obaze. He wanted him at that time? At that now. time, yes. He was, that, that was his prime choice. And later he gave the Anambra North people an opportunity to bring out a candidate. They brought out a candidate whom he didn't like because of his religious inclination. I don't want to go because Peter has split Anambra State. Unfortunately, that person wasn't the kind of candidate we would like to. But four years ago, most importantly, people should have asked him. Four years ago, this was a man, a shattered accountant, rose to the rank of executive director of a bank, and Peter took him all around Anambra State to be the best presentation anybody could have. And there was little doubt about his uh, qualification, his ability. And Peter said if he was able to manage a bank at this level, that he's convenient, I mean confident that whatever he left behind in Anambra State, he'll be able to take care of it. What would have expected? And I was asking him this yesterday. If Peter, uh, I mean, if William Obiano had not done well, why didn't you press conference, national press conference, tell Anambra people, what this young man has done that has made you change your mind just after four years. He hasn't done it up to till date? Well, to the best of my knowledge, he hasn't done it. Well, when you say that he has split a number of states, uh, there are those who would Religious split. Oh, you know, okay. we used to be a, 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 a homogeneous Christian uh, uh, state. Now you talk about whether you're a Catholic or you're an Anglican or you're a Pentecostal. That is where we are degenerating now, and it's unfortunate. And he studied that uh, politics. But most importantly, I asked him yesterday, or that I told him yesterday, that the time Ojuku said he would not go for a second term, Ojuku refused this MP to be going for a second term. A day after he went to Oka, Ojuku went to Oka and raised now senior advocate, Emeka Etiaba, raised his hand up as the candidate for Abga. Peter went, if I say he was crazy, it would be an understatement. Ojuku refused to see him in his house. He took this MP to me to go to Ojuku's house and prostrated. Because I called Ojuku on telephone asking him, why are you doing this? Why did you go to Oka to raise the Mekhe Etiaba's hand? He said, that his dead body, that this young man has been so disappointing that I should come to his house. And I came to his house and saw Victor lying on the floor, begging Ojuku to so, allow 
Peter but, to uh, complete his second term. We can't verify any of those now. No, but, but there are, uh, uh, apart from Juku, he is dead. Uh, Victor will marry his alive and because he was the one who took Peter but and went back to Juku's house. About this particular scenario now, yes. these forthcoming elections and the goings on between the current governor and his predecessor, what do you think went wrong? Well, I was listening to my friend and he hardly ever said what, what went wrong. Other than the uh, number. He said there's no continuity. Well, I didn't know what continuity meant because he was commissioner for information and i would like a situation where you people will bring him back and probably I'll, I'll be around because he was commissioner for information go to abs and the newspaper of anamba say when he was commissioner it was a sorry site chamberlain if you go to abs now it's as good i don't want to write down your station your own is a, a chance play for an abs in Oka. i'm telling you it looks first class but he was there running around because it's the concept of so much continuity. Now, huh? The concept of continuity. Oka was a glorified local government for eight years. Peter B was governor. If you're passing through Oka now, over flyovers, you wouldn't know when you pass Oka. So why is but he most saying, important, what was he saying? Or what he said that look, he, well, he, he has that, roads. That, that's was... freedom of expression. I'm coming first. You see, the governor when he launched his uh, mission statement and vision, he had four cardinal principles. One is agriculture, industrialization, trade and commerce, and then oil and gas. But um, he showed some enablers. You know, by the time Peter was governor, what was rife in Anambra State was kidnapping, armed robbery. All our big shots, nobody came home. But I tell you, in the past four years, people in Anambra sleep with their two eyes closed. Security has become, I mean, I mean I, I, you, are, you are a journalist, you should know, because you write about this. Everything that until recently when some war, uh, warlords came in from South Africa, God well, said, messed up. What do you say to those who say that, well, uh, a lot of this, what you've just said now, uh, was made possible because the former governor, uh, from what he said, he said he left over 75 billion naira in the account. And well, so you, the governor you know, there had been a, a, dispute, a dispute about the uh, current cost. At the end of the day, it was 9 billion that Peter B left. It's not true. Not Nine over billion. 75 billion that was, that was falsehood. Le nine billion and I, was, I would like you to invite officials of the present government and invite Peter to tell us how this uh, nine billion was left because uh, the, the claim and I saw him claiming that Peter B has no property anywhere in this country this is the greatest fallacy of the 21st century Peter owns a company called Next International he's probably the, the biggest property owner in this country I don't talk of uh, the big uh, shopping mall in uh, Abuja. His younger brother controls everything he is, did. Is there anyone in Anambra? Oh yes, there's shop right he has at Anisha. Everything about shop right is Peter B. He annexed a, a land in my town in Newe, through a foreign and offshore okay, company. Okay, okay. And he's building to... something there now. 